on the group prime minister madam chairperson as sushma ji mentioned in the morning putting one of my favorite couplets this there are some very special moments in the life of a nation this is one such moment the nation awaits with bated breath how the collective wisdom of this august house will be reflected in the vote at the end of the debate on the lokpal and lok ayukta bill 2011 madam the broad provisions of this bill have been vigorously debated both in the public domain and by political parties it is my honest belief that the bill that is now before the sarvesh thals lives up to the promise that members of this house collectively made to the people of this country by way of the sense of the house at the end of the debate on 27 august 2011 madam speaker the task of legislation is very serious business and must eventually be performed by all of us who have been constitutionally assigned this duty others can persuade and have their voices heard but the decision must rest with us at the same time we must keep in mind the fact that corruption and its consequences eat into the body politic we have seen how public anger has manifested itself in the last one year let us therefore endorse this bill as proposed in drafting this legislation we have had a wide range of consultation i compliment this honorable members and the chairman of the standing committee which looked at this bill in great detail we have been enriched by the wisdom of political parties and of all shades of opinion that have been taken into account madam speaker i wish to state that when our government was elected to office in 2004 we wanted our policies to be people centric we believe in a transparent open governance and the well being of the aum aadmi is central to all our policy prescription our ideological commitment to open governance led us to bring the right to information act in 2005 to further our people centric policies we enacted the national rural employment guarantee act 2005 the right to our children to free and compulsory education act 2009 is evidence of our desire to empower the disadvantaged and marginalized the national rural health mission addresses the health concerns of the poor in the rural area we have attempted to rejuvenate our cities through the jawarlal nehru national urban renewal mission the rajiv avas yojana aims to provide housing to the poor and homeless in city the introduction of the national food security bill 2011 is yet another step to secure the poor and the vulnerable from the consequences of hunger and deprivation the land acquisition rehabilitation and resettlement bill 2011 seeks equity for the farmer and those deprived of livelihood we have tried to create a more egalitarian and inclusive india delivering the fruits of growth to the less privileged that is 
and that shall continue to be our government's mission. Madam, on corruption, our government, like none before, has taken decisive steps. In the last one year, we have been working on certain landmark legislation. The right of citizens for time-bound delivery of goods and services and redressal of their grievances bill 2011 is before Parliament. The public interest disclosure and protection to persons making the disclosures bill 2011 and the Lokpal and Lokayukta bill 2011 await Parliament's approval. The Judicial Standards and Accountability Bill 2010 has already been cleared by the Standing Committee and awaits government's consideration. The Electronic Delivery of Services Bill 2011 is being introduced, which will ensure that essential public services are electronically delivered at the doorstep of the citizen. These are landmark and unprecedented pieces of legislation. Madam, on the administrative side, our government seeks to streamline decision-making consistent with the principles of transparency and accountability. We are formulating public policy measures on public procurement. A group of ministers has recommended elimination of discretion in administrative patterns where possible. This is work in progress. We began with the Right to Information Act. We will not end the fight against corruption with the Lokpal and Lok Ajukta Bill. Madam, we must embrace a holistic approach in our fight against corruption. Our laws must be all pervasive if we are genuine in our endeavor. Legal sophistry cannot be used to argue that state legislatures must not adopt the model law proposed or delay its enforcement. Corruption is corruption, whether in the union or in the states. It has no legislative color. I urge leaders of all political parties to rise above partisan politics to demonstrate to the people of India that this house means business in its effort to combat corruption. All of us, all of us are party to the resolution reflecting the sense of the house in which we committed to establish local yuktas in the states along with the Lokpa. We would be in breach of the promise that this House made to the nation if we do not provide for the mechanism of the Loka Yuktas by taking recourse to citing articles of the Constitution as in federal. Such a course of action should not derail the sense of the House. I urge all my colleagues in Parliament to rise to the occasion and look beyond politics to pass this law. Madam, the central government is responsible for providing a limited number of public services directly to the citizen. The real problem lies in the domain of state governments where the Aam Admi feels the pinch of petty corruption on a daily basis. It is for this reason that Group C and Group D employees have been brought within the ambit of local yuktas in states. Local as well as state authorities are charged with providing essential services to the common man. It is here that the bane of corruption needs to be fought. It is water, electricity, municipal services, land records, policing, transport, ration shop are but a few examples of essential services provided by states and local authorities that affect the life of the common person. Setting up of local yuktas in states will go a long way 
in addressing the sense of frustration that is reflected in the anger that we see now around us. Madam, even the major flagship schemes of the central government are implemented by public functionaries working under the state government. Every day in this and the other house, members express their disillusionment with the way our central schemes are implemented by states. We need to remedy this. Unless local yuktas are put in place, the cancer of corruption will separate. Let us not delay the issue any further. Federalism cannot be an impediment in our war against corruption.